Hey, bookies. What's a bookie, you say? Well, it's a book-interrupted listener, and I'm hoping it'll also be a book-interrupted blog reader. We've reformatted the blog this season to include a different theme for every single day. So we have Manuscript Monday, Topic Tuesday, Word Wednesday, Thought Thursday, Fact Friday, and Silly Saturday. The Sunday segment remains unchanged, so don't worry if that's the piece that you know and love, you can still have that and more. Don't forget to check out the blog at www.bookinterrupted.com. You can't spend all the time just listening to the podcast. Parental guidance is recommended because this episode has mature topics and strong language. Here are some moments you can look forward to during this episode of Book Interrupted. What are, what do we call it? Feminine hygiene products? Is I that don't like right? that word. Like, yeah, what word do we use? Because it felt even so weird we're not dirty. It. Is there any book that was referenced in it that you're like, oh yeah, maybe I should read that book? Because there's like 70 something books. I do love romance. That's why I always listen to love songs and stuff. So I wrote her a letter. Now she probably won't want to come on the podcast because, oh, you know. geez, that was harsh. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. I'll shut the fuck up now. My body is Disrupted mind, body, and soul. Inspiration is with God, and we're gonna talk it out on Book Interrupted. Welcome to Book Interrupted, a book club for busy people to connect and one that celebrates life's interruptions. If you'd like to join along, this book cycle is from July 18th to August 28th. It's Lindsay's book pick. And we're reading Fun Home by Alison Bechtel. Alison Bechtel's best selling graphic memoir charts her fraught relationship with her late father. Distance and exacting, he was an English teacher and the director of the town's funeral home, which Alison and her family refer to as the Fun Home. Let's listen in to this episode's group discussion. Did you guys like how, because this book was written in 2007, right? Is that right? It says um, 2006. 2006? Six, okay. And she references, like, she talks about her period, which I thought was really great and how she she's only going to tell her mom once she had pads. So I thought that was kind of something that we could talk about just because we talk about Kirsten Karchmar. Very rarely do people ever reference their periods in anything, let alone literature. Yeah. Well, she talks about the belt and the, yes. like, that's what you used to have to do. So, like, the belt and the, yeah. the clips. The clips. In order to hold the pad up. Yeah. It's <laughs> terrible i'm so glad you imagine oh i know that makes sense like oh no wonder nobody wanted to talk about they're like oh what is this i have to wear this contraption <laughs> who made this up a man yeah that's so that true awful yeah yeah well even now now that i have the period underwear i'm like i, ha- I don't even know how i did pads anymore I can never go back to pads now that i do period underwear oh man i'm gonna have to get the underwear then i gotta try I know, this but I placed another order six weeks ago and have emailed Nick's twice and they still haven't sent me my order and I don't know why. Usually they're fast. Underwear. They're usually fast, but they have a yeah. sale right now. I know. Usually it was like the next week. Do they have a sale? Yeah, they have a big sale right now. I keep on getting an email. Well, it. they're being dinks. Yeah, the only thing I don't like about them is the washing. Them, yeah, yeah. Which of course, is of course. kind of annoying, but... Yeah, it is kind of nice. Yeah, do you guys wash it separate from other clothing materials? No, not at all. I throw them right in the washing Me machine. Me too. I don't either. No? With the rest okay. of my laundry. Do you do a preemptive rinse or anything? I do a rinse. Okay. I put them in a basin. There's like, I put like a little thing in my shower while I'm on my period and I throw them in there in water. And then I like dump that out so it feels like it's pre rinse Okay. But when now they think about it, it's like stupid. Why do I do that? Yeah. I don't do anything, Kara. They just go in my laundry bin and I wash okay. them with my regular oh. laundry. You just toss it in? I put them in a the little bag. I wash them and then put them in the wash. Okay. Oh, do you wash them and then put them in the wash? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I'm more like Lindsay. I wash them like I use soap and I wash in the sink or yeah. in the shower. And then dry them. And then if I feel like I can use them again, they're clean enough, I'll use them again. And then when the end of my period that's why i wanted to buy more because i ended up needing more than yeah the four pairs i have i need to have 
Yeah. Eight pairs I, is what I've estimated. Yeah, and then yeah. I throw them in the wash. I do combo cup and Me too, combo cup. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I still combo cup on like my main day. You do the combo sure. cup with it? Okay. And then are you supposed to change the underwear? Because you know how with like other feminine... What are what do we call it? feminine hygiene products? Is that the right term? I don't like that word. Neither. Oh, don't call. So we're not no. dirty. I don't like feminine hygiene because it implies we're dirty if we don't use. Yeah. It. What word do we use? Because it felt even weird saying it. Vaggy stuff. Yeah, period stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maxi pads and tampons. You know how you're supposed to about every four hours with the underwear. Is it recommended about every four no. hours, or could you wear them for a full eight hour day? Yeah, all day. Wear them all day Wait until you need to change like them. Like if you're sparse. You'll know. Okay. You'll know. On a sparse day, you'd probably combo with cup. On the last day of my period, it's I'm just wearing it just in case. Me too. Okay. I just yeah. wear it. Because it just feels like underwear. Like I'll, they actually have some that are extra pads that you can put on. So I often will just. Yeah. Nighttime ones. Separated pads. So I'll wear them and I'll put the other pad on and then partway through the day, I'll take the pad off and just finish wearing those ones. Oh. I don't use a cup because it hurts, but. Got it. Yeah, the book. (laughs) No, it's good that she said it in the book. There was something else I was watching. Oh, I turned on Blossom. Remember that TV show? Yeah. And the first episode, she's talking about her period. And that was in the, that was a while ago. That was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. And she talked about her period right away, like really openly. So even though we say that maybe people didn't talk about it, I think it was in the media and in pop culture. We just maybe got uncomfortable about it more. <laughs> maybe. maybe, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, I remember that episode kind of. It was before I had a period. I was like, what, what are they talking about? <laughs> Someone <laughs> told me about this. <laughs> well, yeah, I have a vague memory of this episode. Any case, we're probably close to being finished. And I yeah. just want to say that I appreciate that all of you at least tried to go on this journey of doing something a bit different, you know, or trying a different medium or trying this graphic novel, even though I know it was out of, I think, everybody's comfort zone, including my own. So, (laughs) so thank you all for trying it out, even if you liked it or didn't. And thank you, Alison Bechtel, for writing this and for, you know, when you wrote it, I think it was very big for a lot of people because she shocked about her you know, coming out and her sexuality very openly, all of that stuff. So, so thank you for that. Oh, I forgot to say one big thing. The biggest thing. I wrote her a letter. (laughs) This is the big thing. I wrote her, I was like, I gotta tell you guys. So I wrote her a letter. Now she probably won't want to come on the podcast because Uh you you guys hated the book. (laughs) I like the book. I read it more than once. I read it so fast. I had to go through back later to make notes. (laughs) So I wrote her a handwritten letter because on her website, she says that she doesn't check her emails. But you will check snail mail. So I hand wrote on this like old paper that I had when I was a kid. For some reason, I still have it with, I don't know, flowers on it. (laughs) And I wrote to her and explained a bit about us in brackets. I was like, it was a very weird letter saying things like, oh, I haven't written a snail mail letter in a while. And oh, my handwriting is atrocious. And I don't know, all this stuff. And then I drew her at the end. Oh, yeah very bad drawing but a drawing of her and I said look if you are interested in coming on the podcast to chat with us you know send an email to Sarah or call me and I gave my number and then I said but if not I just wanted to tell you that we did your we, I picked your book for my podcast and That's so we'll nice. see maybe she'll wow. get I sent it a, a few you. days ago so maybe for the fan episode we'll hear back hopefully she even maybe just responds and even if she declines at least it'll be something fun that we connected with yeah. the author so, so and we could do off the shelf with her if it's not by the fan episode right yeah if she's interested yeah. i don't know we'll see yeah, i don't think so after this but we she didn't go around and say who oh. recommends the book so oh yeah. that's true an assumption true so who wants to go first i wouldn't recommend it because <laughs> i didn't finish it yeah same it's hard to make a recommendation but now I would actually like to go back to the library, take it out again, and just make myself now finish it based on the great things that you guys shared. I'd like to see me be able to I circle agree. back because I mostly just got hung up on just so many curious questions about her creative process and why this format and this medium, you know? Yeah, I let myself down. So I would recommend the book only, you know, how sometimes we say recommend the book with, what do we call it again? Caveat? No. 
caveat. That's not the word. That's no, the... caveat's the right. I always forget the word we used when we coined the phrase. I don't know. Exception? Exception. Um, no. No. No, it was clever. It was clever. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that wasn't clever. Yeah, jerk. No, they came out so rude. I was like, no, no, it was clever. Like, what you said wasn't clever. It was like, what the fuck? Thanks. As soon as I said it, I was like, geez, that was harsh. <laughs> sorry. Not like that. Go ahead. I'll shut the fuck up now. Okay. I would recommend the book, but I would say, first of all, it's difficult to read a graphic novel if you're not used to it. And then give yourself some time. Because I, I would say it took me about half the book. And then it was like subtitles. So it took me a while to get used to that format. It felt uncomfortable. And then secondly, read to the end because the end gets better. And I would just tell people I really didn't like it until the last three chapters. So mm. I gave it a so-so because of that. I would recommend the book. You know, I meant to wa- try to find the musical before we met <laughs> this time. So maybe I'll try to do that before the fan episode because there was a musical. And I think that you can get it somewhere to watch. I mean, it's not showing right now, obviously not where I am either, (laughs) but I didn't find the graphic novel format hard to get into at all. In fact, I read it very quickly. I've read graphic novels before. It might be a little intimidating for people. The vocabulary was a little bit above my head in many cases, but I don't think that interfered with my enjoyment of the book. I usually just skip over the words I don't know and try to get the gist of it. And I would say with Sarah too, that it's not just a comic story. Strip. So you have to get to the end because she's layering the story for like the big conclusion at the end is how I felt about the book. Yeah, but I would probably recommend it to certain people. This isn't for everybody, but I liked it. So I would recommend the book with if you keep an open mind when you're doing it, especially if you're someone like me who's never read a graphic novel before. I also think to forgive yourself if you're reading it, you don't know words like Leah or me or all of us, or you don't know the literary references. If you can think about it more, like change your brain that it's, you're not reading a novel, you're reading something different, then that would be useful. I agree with Sarah to read it to the end. I also found that at the beginning, I tried to read very short amounts and then go back to it. And I think that If you're going to do it, try to do it in a couple of really deep sittings so that you can really delve into it and understand and take your time. You know, don't try to skim it. If you can kind of just do that, then it makes it better. But yeah, I would definitely recommend it, but for certain people, not for everybody. Yeah. I agree with that too. The last three chapters, I read longer sessions. I finished an entire chapter, whereas before I'd stop when I was tired or something came up or the kids were coming home or whatever. So I didn't end on each chapter necessarily. So I think you're right. I think if you read it together, well, for me, it took a couple of minutes just to get used to the graphic novel part because it is it's slower. It's like reading poetry. You have to read it like sl- more slowly. You can't just quickly whip through it. It's not like that. So yeah, I agree. Is there any book that was referenced in it that you're like, oh yeah, maybe I should read that book? Because there's like 70 something books that were referenced in this book Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'll go first i was like yeah go first oh yeah i've never read catcher in the rye i feel like it's one of those books Mm. you're supposed to read does that make any sense yeah it's because it's catcher in the rye yeah i might have to read catcher in the rye so maybe i'll be able to do that before the fan episode i don't know we'll see no there was none in particular nobody felt like oh maybe we should try to read that no, no, it was more just a, oh, wow, there's so much literature out so there in the world. Read. Yeah, it was more of a, that. Uh, Ulysses. Is that how you say it? Ulysses? Oh, Ulysses? Ulysses. Ulysses. That's what I wanted to read. Oh, yeah, I was thinking that one, too. I was like, oh, I haven't read that. Yeah, that was the one. I was like, oh, because she was talking about with the professor and stuff like that. And her father, it's his, his favorite book. I should read that. I'm curious about this book now. That an entire course is just about this book. That's the one for me. Yeah. Well, there we go. We did it. Fun home, a family tragic comic. We made it through. We Mm. did it. (laughs) My kids keep trying to pick it up. Like, yeah, what's this we book? Do. I was like, this is an adult book. <laughs> we do. I'm like, oh, adult it has book. the word fun and it's an adult book. <laughs> it's good. It looks very yeah. fun. Yeah. Oh, I wanted adult one book. quick other question. Sarah, did you, yeah. I know you felt com- uncomfortable about some of the more graphic sex scenes. Did you make it through without, okay. <laughs> yeah, because without it feeling- was, I thought, because when I was slipping through, I thought it was going to be like a romance. But she, she never got into it like a romance. It was just it wasn't it was like that. the girl she was with is just a caricature. 
Do you know what I mean? Like she wasn't really, she never developed her character at all. I didn't really get to know her at all. So it wasn't like a romance. I wasn't so embarrassed. It was just another picture to go through. When I thought what it was when I was flipping through was that I was going to hear romantic dialogue to go (laughs) with the sexual acts, I was feeling uncomfortable. You were uncomfortable with the romance part, but if it's just sex, that's just fine. (laughs) Absolutely. That's like, seems the opposite for Sarah. (laughs) No, but I just mean she wasn't really... She was a secondary character. It would be different if she was a character that I... She made me grow to know. Right, right. She wasn't developed. She was just a background character. Do you know what I mean? Like, I kind of knew who she was, and then they showed a sex scene. I would have been like, oh. And she never described it. She was just... It was just like a comment that she had come back to the school. She's like, and I made it back there. What what did she say here? She said, I returned to school. That's the beginning of her sex scene. She doesn't say anything about having sex. And I returned to school. And then another part was that she wasn't doing her reading. That she she stopped reading the book because she was, you know what I mean? It was like a second thought. It wasn't... Reading James and the Giant Peach. (laughs) (laughs) It was like the sex was a side note. It was just a picture. There was no words to go with the actions. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like I didn't read my book and then a picture of her having sex. I returned to school, a picture of her having sex. That's good though, right? Because often like in like... like, like, Oftentimes in movies or shows where there's like a, a coming out or whatever, the emphasis is put on the sex, whereas this story is not. The emphasis isn't about sex. It's about living your true self and whether you hide who you are and wh- whether that brings you happiness or whatever. So it's kind of nice that there was a side note, but it's also funny that that made you more uncomfortable that there wasn't romance. Or to let mm. more comfortable that there wasn't More comfortable. Romance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe more comfortable. That's so funny. Because you love romance. I do love romance. That's why I always listen to love songs and stuff. It would make me uncomfortable to see drawings of a romance. Like I didn't even mind, not it was morbid, but I didn't even mind the cadaver. It was graphic, but I wasn't embarrassed. Mm-hmm. Okay, on that note. <laughs> on that note, we're out. <laughs> okay. I still so want to unpack everyone... this like sex versus romance thing, but I know we're not going to do it right here. But I got so many questions for you, Sarah. So many questions. What? <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Another That's time. <laughs> Another time. We okay. got to talk about burnout. Burnout. Yeah. yeah. Before we burn we out. Don't talk about burnout. Burnout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Book interrupted. This interruption is brought to you by Unpublished. Do you want to know more about the members and Book Interrupted? Go behind the scenes? Visit our website at www.bookinterrupted.com. Hi, so I'm just doing a little personal journal right now, or I'm recording personal journals, but I thought I'd do a little aside and do an audio interruption and let you know that I'm really feeling nervous about doing the talk today we're kind of in our final talk about the book Fun Home, and I didn't read it. I'm, it was really naughty, and I didn't do it. This is the first time I like actively made a choice not to read it because it just isn't my book. I just didn't love it. I just couldn't latch on to any character that I felt attached to, and just the style of book wasn't mine. Anyways, you can hear about that in my book report. However, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I guess I don't know. Here's the big choice. Do I just fake it and pretend I read it? Do I, am I just honest and then I'm just a total bummer? And it, like, I feel like that kind of hurts someone's feelings because that's their book choice, even though it's not like they wrote it. Gosh, I never know what to do. I so rarely finish the books in time, but this time I was just plain naughty. Oh, well. Book interrupted. It's book report time. We're going to find out from each member their final thoughts. And do they recommend the book? Let's listen. Hi, uh, I am sweating my butt off in Toronto, just like I said I would. Man, it's hot today. And I just finished Fun Home. It was a really good option for summer, for me, anyways. So that was good. You know, I liked it at the end, I really did. I felt that the more that I got into it, the more I realized how much the words were almost like poetry that the images with the words created this really cool experience in which you're appreciating this art and then also appreciating the words and then together as a whole. I loved her story. 
of her relationship with her father and how kind of that shaped the way that she uh, went through the world. And I love the image at the end of him catching her as she jumps into the pool. No, oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> Sorry if anyone hasn't read the book. The one thing that I did find, I found it was a little bit, maybe it was the format or maybe it was supposed to be that way, uh, but I did find it was very detached of emotion in a lot of ways. There was not a lot of emotion in there, which kind of makes sense with the story and with her relationship and with the way that she was brought up, all of these things, but I wanted a little bit more emotion in the storytelling but maybe that's just not the way that it's supposed to go. I still enjoyed it. I still liked it. I thought it was just a really cool experience to be able to read a graphic novel and to read it in a serious, more serious kind of story, but also there was some fun stuff in there. And I haven't seen the musical yet, but I'm excited. I think I found a really bad version somewhere online of like a shaky camera in of a Broadway production. So maybe one day I'll sit down and watch that, which would be cool. But yeah, I, I don't know that I'm going to jump out and buy another graphic novel and read it. Maybe. I think I'd probably read Alison Bechtel's more of her stuff. But I, if I had to choose, I'd probably prefer a novel over, over this. But I still liked it. I'm glad we did it. And I'm glad I pushed myself to do something different. And glad I'm hopefully pushing my fellow book interrupted ladies to push themselves as well to kind of try something different that they might not have done before and whether they like it or they don't at least it was something neat and different for them that's about it great thanks for joining me for my book cycle and i look forward to reading the next book see you soon bye so surprisingly the last few chapters really turned me around i actually kind of enjoyed it i did not like it until i got to the last couple chapters and what I'm unsure of is if I softened about the book and the characters or if the tone of the book softened, which made me feel more empathy for the characters within the book. Because I did. The last few chapters, I felt really a lot of empathy for the mother, the father, and for Allison. So I'm not sure what shifted in the book, if it was me or the book. So I'm really interested to talk to the other members in the group to see how they liked the book and if they had the same experience when they finished it. So if I was going to recommend this book, I would suggest to someone to read it right to the end because in the middle, I wasn't enjoying it at all. I actually stopped reading and read another novel in between because I didn't want to go back to it. But then I did because I always like to finish the books and I really liked the last few chapters. And I really felt for everyone in this situation everyone's kind of guiltless because it was just a rotten situation you know her dad not being able to be authentic to himself her mom feeling trapped and you know you see her mom doing the play and doing her thesis and she's you know trying and her having that heart to heart talk with her mom and her mom feeling like she can open up to her and then her father and her having a heart to heart and him the books he gave her as well so I was a little upset that she quit English when he's finally bonding with her. But at the same time, once again, I felt sympathy for her and empathy where before I was kind of, I didn't really care for any of them. But by the end, I did. So I, I'm interested to talk to the other members and see how they liked the book and if they had that same feeling by the end. Also, I should mention, I definitely got into reading a graphic novel. It is just like subtitles, like we mentioned in one of our episodes. At first, I couldn't stand reading the graphic novel. I hated the bubbles and everything was like choppy and I felt like I couldn't get into the book. But by the end, I didn't even notice. It was great. So I could read another graphic novel and be okay. I still probably will lean towards regular novels because I like my imagination to go. But I can see if you want to get a taste of especially if this is a memoir, but a taste of what the author wants you to see, then a graphic novel is a great tool for that. So if I was going to recommend the book, I would recommend it to someone and say, just read it to the end because I wasn't necessarily enjoying it. I would recommend this book now that I have read it to the very end because I'm thinking about it afterwards, pondering the people in the book and their lives and lives of people probably in the same situation as them in the past. And and how far we've come and how far we still have to go 
So yeah, I think that I would recommend this book, but I would tell them to read at the end and to get used to the whole graphic novel thing. All right, see you in the next one. Hi, this is my book report for Bun Home. So my report is I stopped reading it. Now I know often I don't finish the books in time because I'm a super slow reader and I don't commit enough time to it. I underestimate how much time it's gonna take me. But this was an active choice. I didn't enjoy the book. I didn't enjoy the style of illustration and I didn't enjoy this the layout of reading like this. And I want to be very respectful to the author because I know that this is her personal story and memoir. So I want to be really respectful to the fact that this is her story and her journey. And that's just a very brave thing. And uh, there's nothing not to like about that. However, it's just not the book for me. I don't think that I would recommend it, but I can't because I didn't finish it. So that would be unfair if I don't really know what I'm getting into. I think that I'll put it in, I don't know what it's like where you guys are listening from, but we have these cute little, they look like giant birdhouses and they're like little book drop off pickups that if you have a book and you want to donate it to the, the birdhouse on the corner, you can. So there's one close to my house and I think I'll put it in there because I have a feeling it'll find its way to someone who will appreciate it more than I did and get probably a lot out of it. So I don't know. It's a New York Times bestseller. It's critically acclaimed. And what do I know? Just wasn't for me. Bye. Hi, this is my final book report for the graphic novel Fun Home, a family tragic comic. I know that some of the other group members had trouble getting into the rhythm of a graphic novel, but I quite enjoyed it. In fact, I usually take a lot of notes and I didn't do that this time. When I read it, I read it pretty quickly and I decided to read it again. So would I recommend it? I would recommend it. I think it's probably best for somebody who does a lot of reading. There are a lot of literary references that, you know, I just don't know. I'm a person who does a lot of reading. I enjoyed that it had a literary references. The only problem is that now it mentions all these books that I might want to also read and it made me start to realize and I know a lot of people realize this already but it made me finally start to realize that there's only so many books you can read in your life so it's very unusual that I will pick up a book and start reading it and not finish it. I don't give up on a lot of books. I enjoy reading a variety of things although mostly science-y books if it's non-fiction and with fiction, I read mostly anything. I like dark fiction as well. So it made me realize that maybe I need to be a little bit choosier about what I read. I sat down and started thinking, you know, how many books do I read in a year? 20, 30, like that would be a good year, I think. And even if we say it's 20 books a year, and then I think about how many years I'm going to be left on the earth. And then I think about all the books that I could read and all the books that come out every year, maybe I need to start being a little choosier or looking at a list of all the books that are referenced in this particular graphic novel. I was thinking maybe I should make a list of the books that I would like to read and then start at least picking things off the list. For example, I've never read Catcher in the Rye and it's often referenced in books like this one. And I think in the back of my mind, I have an idea of what it is, but I just don't know what that book is about. So yes, there's so many books that I would like to read and so many books that I start and always finish. Maybe I need to get better at just stopping, uh, which is not what I did with this book. I finished it and then I started reading it again because I usually take notes as I go to talk with the other ladies and for writing the down the rabbit hole blog as well. I like to have notes afterwards. And so I've been kind of reading through it again and I realized what kind of a, you know, a bit of a literary masterpiece it is. I don't know if that's what I mean, but how it's not just, you know, a comic strip. It doesn't just go from A to B. It takes you on a journey. It talks about stories and then it layers the meaning of those stories from a very shallow to much deeper meaning. And it's revisiting the same stories over and over. 
So you can see the author, it's her memoir. You can see her understanding of her relationship with her father emerge through the storytelling where at the beginning it seems a little bit more shallow and at the end it seems a little bit deeper. And so I'd enjoyed that about the book and I don't think I would have noticed that as much if I hadn't read it more than once. I'm not going to say I read it twice. I read it more than once. I read the full thing and then I started reading sections after and I guess that's how I realized that the same story was being revisited more than once in different ways from different angles. So I can see how it would very easily be made into a Broadway play and I had meant to watch a streamed version of the play before now but I haven't. I've just been too busy so I'm going to try to do that before the fan episode. And Fun Home, you know, it's not a long read. So maybe you want to get it out and from your library or buy it and, and see what you think. I recommend. Hello, hello. I am back again to give my final book report. The ladies at the library, there were three librarians when I went to pick it up. So firstly, I think I may have mentioned this, but maybe I didn't. The book was on hold for an awfully long time, which I found interesting. So that kind of added to the, oh, is this going to be a great book? Then finally I got the notification that the book was ready from the library for me to read. I go to pick it up and there were three young women there working at the library. And as they saw me checking out the book, they all got very excited and were enthused and recommending like, oh yeah, oh, it's great. You're going to love it. And then I started reading it. I haven't finished the book. I'm sorry. I'm just going to be honest and forthcoming about that. I couldn't make myself, I'm sure, well, okay, I think I could make myself, but I am choosing not to. I made it just over halfway through and I don't enjoy it. I, in the meantime, also checked out other graphic novels to see Cause like this was my first graphic novel. I was like, well, maybe it's just the medium. Maybe I don't enjoy graphic novels, but no, I do enjoy some graphic novels. I just don't happen to enjoy this one. So I think I said this in my previous personal journal. I don't love it. I wouldn't use the word hate. Uh, again, I'm in that category of meh. I likely won't recommend it. I am thankful though that I got the opportunity to explore this book and conceptually I liked the idea. But here were a couple things that I found prevented me from really getting into the book. Number one, the language. The fancy, super, I don't even know how to describe these words, but they just weren't words that are in my normal vocabulary. And I wanted to better understand why the use of such uncommon language. I found that it distanced me from the main character. And I was like, okay, so I wonder if that was a purposeful choice in some ways with the main character trying to emulate between her expression as the artist and readers who would be consuming this. Was she trying to perhaps mimic the relationship that I'm wondering that she had with her father, that it wasn't warm and close and inviting? It was, she would use words like, it was like living in a museum, you know, and things were to like look at, not touch. So I guess I was curious if the author purposely chose to use that language to try to simulate what the relationship between father and daughter may have been like. Or was she just using the fancy words that I felt like a dum-dum on because she herself is a product of having been raised by her father? So was it not even a tactic to be used between author and reader? Was it instead just she is a byproduct of her environment, her people, so that that's just how she speaks? So. I couldn't get my head around the use of the language there. The second thing that I found that pushed me out instead of bringing me, luring me in was I couldn't understand why the graphic novel medium. So many times artists 
are drawn to a creative outlet in an effort to better understand something about themselves. That's not a big generalized like blanket statement that is necessarily true for all artists, but more often than not, that's what's occurring. And the medium usually lends itself and complements what is trying to be expressed and I couldn't tell why did this story have to be shared in a graphic novel I, I didn't understand it it's not that the art was horrible it was just lukewarm and then when I did my research and got into some other graphic novels I could see how the author and illustrator tries to to use snapshots like tableaus, like little signets as ways of doubling down on an emotion. And I didn't get a lot of that here. Maybe it would have been awesome to see on one page, you know, the main character like giant eye roll. I don't know, that's just like a random example, but something that would help me start to befriend the main character so that I could better understand her perspective. And I didn't find that the medium supported that relationship. This could just be my own subjective opinion. Well, it is my own subjective opinion, but maybe that's what I personally try to get out of art. And that might not be necessary here, but I don't know, folks, it wasn't my most favorite read. I can tell you that much. Oh, fun home. You are no fun home for me. I don't remember what I said in my second personal journal, but it was probably something like this. <laughs> I did not enjoy that book. I didn't enjoy its format, nor its tone, nor its content. None of it. I don't know. It was really, really difficult for me to read. I never really got into it. And it wasn't like it was hard. I don't know how to describe it. I could read it. It just felt like I required so much effort from me because I just had to keep on. Like there was no flow in reading it. I had to jump around from this line on top of that picture and then the words in the picture and then the words under the picture and then some words beside the picture and then find the next place to start because it wasn't consistent either. Sometimes a line would go underneath both pictures and or above both pictures or whatever. Continually solving that puzzle required so much extra mental effort that I never found myself like getting lost in the story, I guess. Kind of redundant too, because the blurb above the picture cell would describe the picture cell or describe whatever's going on. And then in the picture cell, I don't know, like she'd be like, I tried to connect with my dad over books. And then like in the cell, she'd be like, what book do you like? Like, I don't know, it's just, it was not my, favorite book that is for sure I always feel bad too when uh, I don't like a book because I don't want the person who chose the book to take it personally out of all of us I think Schweitz is the one that is least likely to take it personally anyways she doesn't care but I still worry because I just want to shit talk it forever because <laughs> I really didn't like it and I also I missed the last the group discussion the final group discussion for this book so I'm upset about that. I would have liked to have participated and trash talked it in real time. <laughs> but I guess I'll just have to use my book report to do so. Anyway, I also didn't like the story, if you can even call it that. I hesitate to criticize because the story is her memoir. So it's not like it's her fault if I don't like, you know, her childhood. But just I didn't find it that interesting. I don't know. It was not a good read. I can't imagine it as a play. Like it's the kind of play that I would be really mad if I stayed till the end because at intermission I would be being like, we should leave. And then I would stay because obviously it's got to get better, right? Wrong. It doesn't. It just stays the same. Like, boo. it was like monotone. It was just, I don't know. I didn't find there was much of a climax. While I appreciate the literary references, they were also a little bit extra. You would have to read 450 other books and be intimately aware of at least seven other authors 
to actually know what the author of this story was talking about half of the time so that was annoying like her choice in language was really elevated so rather than just saying you know I was upset she would be like I was humpumflified or whatever some fucking word for that is I don't know it's just the whole experience was not one I enjoyed sorry Schweitz although you don't care we've been over this but I would not recommend this book. I would not recommend people make it into a play. I can't believe that that is a thing. I don't know, maybe I missed something while in all that hard work I was doing and trying to read the graphic novel. Maybe I missed like some humor or something. I don't know. It just wasn't even a little bit interesting. And the symbolism or what, what would they be called? Like literary illusions that she drew. I don't know, they were just so complex. It was really kind of, what would be the word for that? The fact that it was written like a graphic novel, right? So that's simplistic, I guess you would, I would describe it like that, you know, pictures and words. And then the actual content of the writing was so advanced. So that was an interesting contrast, I guess. So for me, fun home is a no. It was not a fun home. But I mean, that was a funeral home. So yeah, that fits because it was where my desire to read goes to die. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this episode of Book Interrupted. If you'd like to see the video highlights from this episode, please go to our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and you'll be notified when there's new content. Want to be part of the conversation? Have your voice heard on our fan episode next week or recommend a book and you could be joining us for a six week book cycle. Find out more by going to www.bookinterrupted.com slash fans. Are you interested in buying this book? Do you want to order the next book so you can read along? Go to www.bookinterrupted.com slash shop to see a complete list of our books. And if you haven't tried them yet, our affiliate partners, The Bookshop and Libro.fm both help support your local bookstore where available. Thanks for taking the time to check in and connect. We'll see you next time on Book Interrupted. Book Interrupted. Never forget, every child matters.